Hello, in this webinar I'm going to look at the way mobile devices are overtaking desktop PCs for internet access, how mobiles are used in conjunction with other screens and the implications of this for e-learning content production and activities. As you can see from the chart, forecasts for mobile device internet usage are passing desktop access and will continue to grow as more people switch to or complement their PC with a mobile device such as a smartphone or tablet. Mobile learning is e-learning but liberated from a desktop device. As technology becomes more powerful and smaller with each iteration, opportunities to engage with content and peers in time and place have changed accordingly. Recent hardware refreshes in educational organisations sometimes include iPads or similar tablet devices, and desktop PCs are used only for special applications and not being upgraded. On an individual level, touchscreen smartphones are dominating the mobile phone market. This means that for many people, they are always connected to the internet wherever they are. Clearly, there is a shift towards a hardware platform that is highly mobile and network connected that offers users operating systems that provide opportunities for touch-friendly, multimedia, synchronous or asynchronous interaction. There are some interesting implications of this shift that affect how online elements of a course are devised and delivered. Firstly, the flipped classroom model of teaching becomes more valid as accessibility to learning material in terms of access to devices in time and place, increases. In terms of how students produce evidence and share and learn from each other, mobile offers unparalleled opportunities. Field trips can be transformed as students set about collecting evidence through audio and video and sharing that with written interactions on a VLE or through social networking. And it's available later in the classroom for reflection and class discussion. From a constructivist theory of learning, this individual and collective approach to interacting with content offers a powerful way for students to share and learn from each other's experiences and perspectives. However, the learning platform, for example Moodle, that hosts content and activities has to be flexible enough to accommodate a shift in the mode of access. For example, if the VLE doesn't support changing the layout so it can adapt to smaller screen sizes or hasn't been designed for touch interactions, it's likely to fail as a method of access. Here's an example of a website that does not respond to a mobile device. The first video is on a PC web browser and the content displays well. The second is the same site on a mobile phone. And the last is a site on an iPad. As you can see, the website is pretty unusable on a mobile and difficult on a tablet. The way materials and activities are designed, constructed and produced needs to take into account how they will be accessed. For example, documents saved in Word and PDF are going to be more difficult to view on a small screen without some manipulation. And video streaming will quickly eat through a data allowance on a mobile connection. In summary, mobile devices offer new opportunities for accessing and interacting with learning materials and activities but there are some important issues around content production and design that need to be considered. I'm now going to look at some research that Google has done uh, into what devices are used for. Google found that people increasingly have access to multiple devices that are used throughout the day for different purposes. As you can see from this slide, um, their research shows that screens are increasingly used to consume content, with radio, newspapers and magazines almost squeezed out of the picture. Uh, furthermore, multiple devices are used, either in tandem or in sequence. And as you can see from this slide, say 90% of our interactions are screen-based throughout the day. And we spend over four hours a day in our leisure time interacting with screens. Another trend that seems to be emerging is that the type of device used serves different purposes. Google's research concludes that PCs are used for productivity and information seeking, smartphones are for communication such as on social networking, and tablets are used for entertainment such as video or web browsing. It seems that people approach a device with a particular attitude which carries over into the kind of activities they do on it. 
PCs are still viewed as more intensive, task oriented and productive devices, while mobile phones and tablets are more personal and used more for communication and media consumption in a more relaxed way. The research shows that multiple screens are used sequentially and simultaneously throughout the day. The research also shows that multiple screens are used uh, sequentially or simultaneously. Sequential use means that activities are started on one device and then paused and continued on a different device later. And simultaneous use means that multiple screens are used together, probably for different purposes. An example of sequential usage is starting to search for something on your mobile phone and getting some initial results and then taking those results and using them on the laptop later in the day. Simultaneous usage is when you've got one screen going, perhaps the TV, and then another device used for things like social networking or playing games. The most common multiple use is TV and smartphone, with emailing, web browsing and social networking being the most common smartphone activities. So what are the implications of this for mobile learning? Learning management systems, uh, VLE such as Moodle, need to accommodate multiple devices and content, and activities need to be constructed with the platform that they will be accessed on in mind. Uh, I think what the research from Google seems to indicate is that smartphones are often used for social networking, as well as a starting point for a lot of search, which is then often carried over onto a PC while tablets seem to be used more for media consumption like videos and websites. In terms of content design, courses need to be designed so that users can easily find them what they are looking for and access the content independent of platform. In the case of Moodle, this might mean creating web pages with content rather than uploading PDFs or Word documents. Uh, this is because a native web page will respond well to changes in size, while a file will not. This video is captured from a PC browser, and as you can see, the Moodle course is displaying quite well on the screen. All of the text is visible, and the PDF displays very well. It's quite readable. The same site on a mobile screen is also quite usable. This is a responsive theme, so the content has automatically been rearranged to support the actual screen size. But if you look into the PDF, you can see that it doesn't display very well on the screen at all. Another consideration is deciding what content is going to be created and submitted either as assignments or perhaps forum or blog posts. Mobile devices are great for content consumption, but fairly impractical for anything larger than a few tweets and certainly not for long involved messages. For that, PCs are still really needed. Uh, so therefore, don't expect users to have the inclination to create and send complicated work from mobile devices and allow time and resources on desktops or laptops for anything other than short interactions. One interesting result from the Google research is the simultaneous use of devices. Uh, in terms of flipped classroom, you might have an online meeting and suggest people all watch the same YouTube video, perhaps on their internet connected TV or laptop or desktop, and then simultaneously use services like Twitter or Facebook to post reactions to the content on their mobile phones. Um, in conclusion, it seems that the VLE has to be adaptable to cross-platform device usage, and this effectively means responsive design in your VLE's theme. Moodle can cope with that no problem, and there's a new theme developed by Moodle Core called the Clean theme, which is a totally responsive design, and we've seen some of that today. The second issue is what content is produced and how it is delivered, and what the different types of interaction people expect and be able to do according to the device they're using, uh, such as PC, smartphone, or tablet. So if you're starting to put content onto your courses, and you're expecting students to start using smartphones or tablets to access it, you have to be mindful about the way that that content is actually put on to the VLE. Uh, uploading lots of Word documents or PDFs might not necessarily be uh, viewable on the device that the users or the students are, are, are using to get onto the VLE. So you might have to start thinking about creating native Moodle web pages 
um, which uh, you can copy and paste stuff over from Word into the to the Moodle page resource and start to create actual native web pages so that they will respond uh, well with the responsive theme. Um, the result of that, though, is that a content producer is going to have to spend a lot more time during the creation of the course making the content cross-platform compatible. Um, for example, you're going to have to not just upload your Word document or PDF onto the VA anymore, you're going to have to get that converted into the web page. And that's looking like a significant increase in uh, time and resources that you're going to need to create and maintain a mobile-compatible course.